Welcome to News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. I am Fidelia Aguncha. President Mohamed Buhari has held talks with German Chancellor Angela Merkel at a presidential villa in Abuja. The talks between the two leaders centered on business relations between the two countries and ways to reduce irregular migration. President Buhari pledged to do everything to help bring all stranded Nigerians back home, while Merkel, on her part, pledged to also support the Nigerian government in reducing the number of citizens that leave the country. So that uh, the ECOWAS protocol includes free movement of persons, you know, and goods and services. But for those going to Europe, uh, we are not as an administration uh, agreeing for Nigerians to defy the desert, Sahara Desert, and the Mediterranean because they feel that uh, there are greener pastures there, whether they are prepared for it or not. We do not support anything illegal and indisciplined. Uh, you must recall that uh, about six weeks ago, we repatriated about 3,000 Nigerians that were stuck in Libya on their way uh, to Europe. And you also must have read in the papers and must be seen in the televisions the number of Nigerians lost uh, in the Mediterranean. So um, to us, this administration is very clear. We do not support anything illegal. And anybody who feels that uh, his country does not uh, value him, does not offer him uh, what he should be offered as a citizen and decided to defy the desert and the Mediterranean, he's doing it at his own risk. But if found stuck in Libya or anywhere between his final destination and Nigeria, will bring him back home and send him back to his local government. 70% of the, 65% of the people who live in Nigeria are younger than 30 years. The president pointed that out to me, uh, which is to say this is a young country, a young country that is very ambitious indeed, and we both agreed, the president and I, that uh, the trafficking of and migration, especially illegal migration, are problems that can only be tackled if we also provide a, an economic perspective for the young people of the countries in question. I would like to thank the President for the cooperation established in the field of migration. Uh, we still have a few things to do in that regard, but as I said, we are working on it and we intend to accompany it by providing legal uh, ways of migration. The meeting also witnessed the signing of two memorandums of understanding by the business delegation of both countries. One of the MOUs was between the Nigeria Incentive-Based Risk Sharing System for Agricultural Lending, NERSAO, and Jamnis Petcos Technology. In Lagos, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, received 164 Nigerians who voluntarily returned from Libya. The returnees include 61 adult female, 96 adult males, 76 pregnant women, 2 children, 5 infants, and 17 medical cases. Their arrival brings the total number of Nigerians returning from Libya in 2018 to just over 3,000. Nigeria's charge of affairs in Libya, Alex Kaffa, says the government is still working to repatriate more people. Our major issue now, that's, uh, apart from bilateral <coughs> issues uh, that we are facing with another major challenge that you are all aware is uh, the migrant crisis which has been like a national outrage when it happened and uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, led the powerful delegation to uh, Libya and, uh, to, to evacuate uh, our nationals, thousands of them. Um, as I speak today, um, 
a total number of uh, 3,801 uh, irregular migrant Nigerians had been repatriated. In security, Nigeria's Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuka Barotai, is soliciting the support of the media and its international partners to combat Boko Haram. The Army Chief is seeking a coordinated response to the problem of landmines and explosive remnants of war. He says the effort requires the assistance of the UN, non-governmental organizations and development partners, admitting that the country cannot do it alone. But let me be quick to state that uh, the mining actions are essentially uh, civil affairs in this circumstance. And the United Nations is fully involved uh, in this regard. They have the expertise, and they have the personnel, and then they have the requisite equipment. Uh, sometimes, uh, I think last year, I did call on the United Nations to support us in this regard and I will use this opportunity to equally do the same uh, with the rep of the UNDP here to look at that uh, area. And um, I'm sure they will be glad to support in this regard. But for the military aspects, we have our own and we handle them accordingly as we move around those critical area points. The army chief also spoke on the protest by some Nigerian soldiers in Maiduguri. He assures that the Aaron soldiers will be disciplined for their actions. We've been working very hard to ensure that those who are bent on uh, Sabotaging our operations and other general administrative efforts. Um, we've worked hard, we've identified some of them, and some of them have been caught martial, and uh, the appropriate sanctions have been meted on them in line with our military justice uh, uh, system. But suffice to say that. Uh, the Nigerian Army, just like any other institution, they have, uh, we have our own uh, bad eggs. But the beauty of it is that we are not resting on our hours. We we'll continue to identify them and uh, we deal with them uh, accordingly. Still on the battle against the insurgent, Ministers of countries in the Lake Chad have agreed to set up a roadmap to help restabilize the Lake Chad Basin. Their agreement was part of a three-day discussion on the basin in Nigeria's federal capital territory, Abuja. The United Nations and European Union has also pledged continued assistance to the countries surrounding the Lake Chad. Once the sixth largest lake in the world, the depletion of the Lake Chad Basin has now become a serious international issue. Several international organizations, aid agencies and even the affected countries have held various conferences to find a solution to the issue. This gathering in Nigeria's federal capital territory, Abuja, is one of such which seeks to find ways to restabilize the basin. After three days of intense debate, the chairman of the Council of Ministers of the Lake Chad Basin Commission, Suleiman Adamu, announces that the countries around the basin have now developed a roadmap to solve the crisis. With the return of relative peace to the region and to ensure coordination and harmonized assistance with the aim of combining successful military operations and growing civilian intervention, the need for a holistic strategic regional approach to the Lake Chad region to mirror the mandate of the multinational joint task force is crucial. To this end, the Lake Chad Basin Commission and multinational joint task force, as well as the African Union, developed a roadmap to elaborate concerned member states' policy approaches on stabilization, operational realities, including capacities of government institutions to support a stabilization program, and the role of international actors in support of an eventual regional stabilization program. The countries will not be doing this alone. International agencies, United Nations, and the European Union have pledged their continued assistance. The United Nations will continue to be a partner to the Lake Chad subregion in its continuous quest for stability, 
recovery, and resilience. UNDP and the entire UN system stand ready to support the Lake Chad Basin countries and partners to ensure an inclusive, sustainable, and accountable implementation of the regional stabilization strategy and put the Lake Chad subregion on a path to sustainable development. Sustainable peace can only be achieved through comprehensive agreements rooted in broad, deep, and durable regional and international partnerships. So, dear partners, as the EU, we very much welcome the comprehensiveness of the strategy, having nine pillars of intervention and even 41 strategic objectives is, of course, bold, but it is a reflection of the complexity of the challenge itself. The Lake Chad Basin runs through five African countries, Nigeria, Niger, Cameroon, Chad and the Central African Republic. It provides livelihood for more than 50 million people who engage in farming, cattle rearing and fishing. Three Nigerians currently undergoing Hajj pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia have died in a road accident. Ibrahim Kana, Commissioner in Charge of Health Matters, National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, says a tragic incident happened while they were on their way to Medina. The victims, who are all from Zamfara State, include Jafaru Sambu, Moody Malamawa, and Abdullahi Durua from Kara, Nomada, Shinkafi, and Maru local government areas, respectively. They were chairman of the All Progressives Congress in their various LGAs. And to politics, the Joint Committee of the Senate and House of Representatives on INEC has reduced the budget it earlier adopted for the 2019 elections. The committee had on Monday adopted a budget of 143 billion naira for the elections, but at its final meeting on Thursday, it reduced the amount by 200 million naira. The lawmakers also recommended that the funds be sourced from the other service-wide votes under the Special Intervention Program to avoid inflation of the 2018 budget. The recommendation will now be forwarded to the National Assembly leadership and the Committee on Appropriation for consideration. Still on the elections, Senate President Bukola Saraki has pledged to tackle poverty and improve the economy if elected as president. The Kwara State Senator has joined a large number of candidates who are contesting under the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. He has also pledged to tackle corruption and improve security in the country. Your generation does not deserve to live in this poverty capital of the world. It is no longer an issue of how we got here. How we got here is no longer the issue. The issue is how do we get out of this situation? I promise you that I will lead the fight and employ every God-given human resource available in turning things around. I am determined to grow Nigeria out of poverty. We will stimulate the growth of SMEs, energize the economy, and create wealth for the youth. I want to see the youth play a major role in all our levels, not only in government, but also in the private sector and every life of Nigeria. There will be a government driven by youthful energy, innovation, and a pioneering entrepreneurial spirit. Nigeria rule will be given all the opportunities to realize their potential full within the national framework that guarantees inclusiveness. We will lead a result-driven administration where we set ourselves targets, clear timelines to ensure deliverables are met. We will be driven by what is best for Nigerians. I have deliberately chosen this opportunity of being here with you, what I'll call my own, my number one constituency, who I see as the future of our great country, to make my intention known. I believe the Nigerian youth are critical to rebuilding and growing the economy and restoring a national pride. I therefore ask you, and all well-meaning Nigerians, join hands with me in this noble cause. My brothers, my sisters, let's grow Nigeria together. A day after Saraki's declaration, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar also picked up his PDP presidential nomination forms purchased for him by the Atiku Support Group. He charged his supporters to also ensure he picks up the PDP tickets. Let me once again 
extend to you my greatest appreciation for this gesture you have done to me. And I believe as you purchase the form, so you will also run around to make sure that I have been duly nominated from different parts of this country so that when I go to submit the forms, I will again enjoy your company and support. And on that day, let us overwhelm the PDP Secretariat. By the time we overwhelm the PDP Secretariat and bring Abuja to a standstill, the PDP will have no alternative than to give us the ticket. In the ruling All Progressives Congress, President Muhammad Buhari has asked members to be good examples to others as the party prepares for its primary elections. Buhari says primary elections must be in compliance with the constitution. The president who gave the charge at the party's National Executive Council meeting in Abuja also spoke on the issue of the defections from the party. He again insisted that the party's structure will not be affected by those who have left. It's a very critical and challenging times. With general election coming in early next year, 2019. Any political party whilst it's sold must get its internal dynamics right and march as a team towards a decisive time at that of major elections in the country. Today, we are meeting to, book, to look at some major decisions that will get as nearly for an excellent performance at the polls next year. Starting with party primaries at various levels, I urge you all to ensure the decisions taken here today are those that will avail the good of the party and ones that meet the earnings and expectations of our team members and supporters nationwide. It's due to your month's work by the new party leadership, the exit barely made a dent in our The Young African Leaders Initiative Yali Network is seeking the active participation of Nigerians in democratic processes to ensure accountability. The group says governments, institutions, and individuals in power must be held accountable for their actions. The coordinator of the advo advocacy group, Ovo Otorigo, was speaking at a press briefing as a prelude to the Accountability and Transparency Summit in Abuja. The event runs for three days from September 4th to 6th, 2018 in Abuja. We recognize that corruption thrives when governments and institutions are not transparent and when elected officials are not accountable to the citizens in the discharge of their duties. Now we are in a time of election. This is the time for us, the citizens of this country, young and old, to exercise our civic duties by asking questions about how the people we have elected have performed how transparent have they been in the discharge of their public duties? A former member of the House of Representatives, Okpayemi Bamidele, has returned to Nigeria after two months of treating gunshot injury in the UK and US. Bamidele, who served as Director General at the, of the Kayade Fayemi campaign in the Ekiti governorship election, was hit by bullets in June after a policeman released sporadic shots at the All Progressives Congress rally in Adoekiti. He has now returned after receiving treatment and has also expressed his gratitude to those who ensured he received proper treatments.
I had faith in God Almighty that I will be back to serve this country in whatever capacity that God will make possible. Um, there isn't more to say today than to express my profound gratitude to God Almighty, to express my profound appreciation of the love shown to me by the people of Nigeria, by the people of New York State especially, and by my brethren, you know, just lost our sons and daughters of the state. They have all been wonderful. I want to thank everybody. And my prayer is that God Almighty will be there for us. Like I said, I can go on and on, but I won't. Because what is important today is just to be able to give glory to God and to thank all those that God used, you know, to either pay for my hospital bills or to fly me out of Nigeria or to visit me in London and in the U.S. to ensure that I got the best, you know, of care and treatment. I'm, I'm happy to be back on my feet. I'm happy I didn't come back in a wheelchair. I'm happy I didn't come back on the stretcher. And I'm ready to go for me. It's a new season. It's a new beginning. News Down continues after this break. Do stay with us. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait a do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go to app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. Let's now join Annette for the latest in business. Hello, Annette. Hi, Fidelia. So there was a decline in government revenue for the month of July. Can you tell us more about that? Sure, Fidelia. The Nigerian government has shared 714.8 billion naira as revenue for the month of July. The figure indicates a decline of 107.1 billion naira, and that's when compared to what was generated in June. The Minister of Finance, Kemi Adoshu, who announced the distribution, also says the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee, FAC, is preparing a new revenue reporting template for the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and other members of the Revenue Sharing Committee. The grand total for this month is total distributable amount is 714 billion 809 million naira, which is inclusive of forex equalization of 25 billion and is um, subject to a deduction of 25 billion to go to the excess crude account. So the excess crude account balance shall now be 2.332 billion and in our excess PPT account we have 133 million US dollars. What the president wanted was on a monthly basis we should actually sit down so that we can ask questions and, and get assurances around any figures that we're not clear on. That was one of the reforms that the president um, implemented and as a result we have fewer um, uh, reconciliation issues than we had in the past. We're making significant progress. Um, we are working with DPR, we're working with NMPC, we're working with all the stakeholders, so we've made significant progress. Brand Nigeria has released its 2018 report on the top 50 brands in Nigeria and the top 10 brands to watch out for. The, at the Eco Atlantic showroom where the report presentation was held, Taiwo Oloyode, the coordinator and CEO of Brand Nigeria, highlights the importance of branding in driving Nigeria's economy. 
Brand Nigeria says they conducted surveys with thousands of respondents to determine which brands are keeping up to their promises of delivering efficient products or services and are adding value to customers. It's a project that uh, started uh, five years ago and the whole idea is uh, to do rating for the top 50 brands and even the brands to watch. And that's why we're here to unveil the top 50 brands for 2018. We're taking advantage of the top 50 brand Nigeria platform to promote Nigeria as a brand. It may interest you to know that our annual report has been viewed, like I said earlier on, from over country, 100 countries. Our approach is having a better narrative about the Nigeria brand, which is our common heritage. We're using the stories of resilience and tenacity of certain individuals and corporate brands, and corporate brands who have been able to be the odds to achieve success in Nigeria as better narrative for the Nigeria brand. The report shows Dangote Group is the most valuable brand in Nigeria. It is the first time a Nigerian brand will achieve this feat since 2013. To read out the list of the 50 brands, even though we have them listed there, and I believe right now we have them on um, our platform, I'll start from the top. Dangote Group, and it's also very important for me to mention this, that for the first time since 2013 when we started, a Nigeria brand is coming top, and that is Dangote Group. The report also shows that 46% of the top brands are Nigerian-owned. Seven of ten listed brands to watch are Nigerian-owned as well, and Fidelity Bank comes in as the first entrance this year on the 36th position. Brand Nigeria says it has more plans in the future. So we're recognizing and celebrating some of these individual and corporate brands who have been able to place the Nigerian name on the global map for the right reasons. Our activity is starting with a creative contest. It's a mass engagement platform where we're bringing out the best of Nigerian creativity in art, in paintings, in sketches, in sculptures, in graphic design, in poem, photos, etc. So from 21st of September to Monday, 8th of October, members of the public have the opportunity to present their work of art for a chance to win cash prizes. The entries are uploaded on either Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag and brand Nigeria. And top three entries with the highest a volume of engagement in terms of likes and followers and all the rest will have 500,000 for the top price, 200,000 and 100,000. We just need that to bring to the consciousness of the people the need for us to promote Nigeria as a brand. Beyond this competition, although your day advises that Nigerians should have a positive image of their country to change the negative perception of foreigners about the Nigerian brand. Let's start even from you. Let me just take a photo and say, I'm a Nigerian, I'm proud. Yeah? On your social media, there won't be less than maybe 100 people. Let them, let them see that. Maybe there's foreigners there, like, there's something to be happy about about Nigeria. Let you, in your little circle of influence, say something. Let he, let she, let all of us start doing one by one. You see, brand is, brand, uh, uh, is a reputation. And a lot of time, what you call it, is what people accept it as, the way you present it. So the time is now for us to start presenting the Nigeria brand that we hope to see. I'm telling you, America is not built by the government of America. America is built by the individual. It is now time for you and I, individual, to start seeing the need for us to build in Nigeria. Let's take the responsibility. Don't let us leave it to the government of the day. No, it is you and I. After the report presentation, Top Brands Nigeria took guests on a tour of the ongoing Eco Atlantic City project. The project, as they say, is a key part in branding Nigeria to be a tourist haven and an attractive place for foreign investment. Up next is a stock report. Do stay with us. The Nigerian Stock Exchange recorded a decline in its all share index today to close at 0.68%, while the market capitalization closed at 12.722 trillion naira. Okomu Oil Palm makes its first entrance to the top gainers chart this week, selling at 76.95 naira per share. And of course, Stambik IBTC Bank is, has recovered from its bearish run yesterday as its shares sold for 48 naira per share. Now, recall that the Central Bank of Nigeria fined Stambik IBTC Bank the sum of 1.8 billion naira for allegedly helping 
helping MTN to illegally transfer $8.1 billion. But Stambik IBTC Bank has responded to this in a press release published on its website saying, quote, the bank is holding further engagement with the CBN in relation to the issues it has raised. Please be assured that the above does not impact on your ability to continue to conduct your various business and corporate transactions with Stambik IBTC Holdings or any of its subsidiaries, including the bank. Well, I guess this message was well received as Stambik IBTC shares increased by 1%. 0.59%. And sadly, for the second time this week, Total and Nigeria PLC shares dropped to 1%. 0.20% to close at 189.7 Naira. Also closing today on the very bad end of the market is Nigerian Breweries Guarantee Trust Bank and Glasgow Smith Klein. On the top traders table today are Diamond Bank PLC, Zenith Bank Guarantee Trust Bank and Dangote Cement. Now take a look at this chart, I mean this very one. And you will see that the most yesterday, uh, the value of the most yesterday is actually 9.790 billion naira. And if I go back to the top traders, you see that where this whole shares is going to is basically Dangote Cement. And this is at 5.317 billion naira. This is the highest number of shares traded today. And the most, the most likely reason for this is that Dangote has announced that, uh, of course, Dangote Cement will soon be listed on the London Stock Exchange. So I guess most investors and shareholders when it's a key into this and of course make some quick cash and now let's go over and look at the global stock markets and here it is uh, you see that the FTSC uh, declined every all of them declined FTSC Dow Jones and Neki by minus 1.11 percent 0.27 percent and 0.02 percent over to you now Fidel yeah Thank you, Annette. A pretty sad week it must have been for investors at the stock market because it started the week with a loss and closed the week with a loss as well. That's right, Fidelia. The Nigerian Stock Exchange closed four days this week in the red and we hope for better results next week. Thank you, Annette. Now, still to come, conflict in Africa has claimed the lives of over five million children. Coming up after this break. Oh, joy, oh, tolly. Ah, Nigeria, you eat Bobo Wani. Oh, boy. Now, what for this hour, Obodo Nigeria? You know, no say, I feel choose who go rule this our country come 2019. You call me who Yeah. Who tell you, say, you get that kind power? I be, you get connection up here. Ah, ah. Shine your eyes. Yes, ke. Ah. With my PVC, I get power when no connection will give anybody. Ah. Hey, the guys, okay, okay. You mean I'm pose with only PVC? I feel choose I'm po. Senator, governor. And even president. Ah, with my PVC, I fit vote who I want, how I want it, and when I want it. Nah, uche di kwano kwa sense de dia. But uh, you mean now? Yes, girl. Anywhere you day, whether not for office, for shop, or even if na house, papa, as long as you don't reach 18 years, make una alele go get una PVCO because this country, now we all know. This message is powered by Good Governance Ambassador of Nigeria, Gogan. Gogan, Gogan. A new report alleged 5 million children in Africa have died from preventable diseases over the last 20 years because armed conflict deprived them of access to basic health care or clean water. A study published in the Lasset Medical Journal showed conflict in countries such as Nigeria and Democratic Republic of Congo had contributed to the death of up to 5 million children under five between 1995 and 2015. The figure includes three million victims aged one or younger and is much higher than previously estimated with civilian infant death outnumbering armed conflict death by more than three to one. Nigeria's female basketball team, the Tigress, has stepped up preparation for the 2018 FIBA Women's World Cup. The African champions are training in Lagos to prepare for the tournament, which begins in Spain on September 22. It will be Nigeria's second appearance at the tournament, with the last one coming in 2006. <laughs> Another day of intense training for Nigeria's female basketball team. The Tigresses are preparing for their second ever appearance at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. The 2018 tournament kicks off in Spain on September 22 and will end on September 30. Nigeria entered the tournament as African champions and are in Group B alongside Turkey, Australia and Argentina. 
The Nigerians are the lowest ranked team in the tournament and are tipped as outsiders for the trophy. But the new coach believes his team will be strong enough to mount a challenge. You don't you don't walk into a, a fight with a, a gunfight with a knife. You can't have knife confidence in a gunfight. <laughs> Come on. Now. So we, we're walking into a real battle. And we're we going to help people understand that Nigeria ain't nobody to look past. And um, we're preparing. I hadn't been to the World Cup, but I've been, you know, USA basketball, and NBA playoffs. Um, competition is competition. And you got to see it that way. And you, you start seeing it different, then you put undue pressure on yourself that that shouldn't even be there. I mean, the battle itself is enough pressure alone. So just getting our girls prepared, worrying about what we do is more important than what anybody else is doing right now. You can't say how good they are now, but how good they can be, oh, the sky's the limit. The World Cup represents a new stage for all the Nigerian players. They, however, share the coach's confidence that they can perform well at the showpiece event. We are very much, we, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. So far, we've improved a lot compared to whatever team we've had in the past. You see, we have new people on the team and we have different talents. Everybody can actually bring something to the table. So I'm really excited because we have a really great team and we're well prepared to actually showcase our talent to the world. I'm really motivated. I mean, it's, it's a big stage for Nigeria to be on. We haven't been back there in a very long time. So I know we're going to represent our country very well and go out there and, and give it our best shot. Oh, I believe we can make it out of it because that's what we're working now. And uh, like you can see, like most of the players here, yeah, we played in Europe and most of us, we have the talent, you know, and we've played uh, against one of, uh, some of these tough players and some of them, they've been playing in our team too, you know, in different teams. So I don't think it's going to be that hard for us to play them because we know how they play before and they know how we play. But the thing is, we have to just come together and play as a team, you know, and bring that fighting spirit, you know, and I believe we're going to do it. The, the Tigresses will kick off their tournament with a group game against Australia before further group games against Turkey and Argentina, respectively. Nigeria basketball fans will be hoping for a better tournament than the 16th place finish in their last World Cup appearance in 2006. Oh, that's the news now on TV360. Do log on to our website at tv360nigeria.com for more news updates. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.